this is Kevin Ring with Nationwide Video. Today I'm going to show you the setup and operation of the new Novastar VM Key software. This is the software you use for processors like the MX40 and uh, I think it's the CX80. Don't quote me on that one, but the MX40 for sure. Uh, the MX40 is becoming a very popular processor, so I just want to show you how it connects. Uh, one thing different on this processor is it does not connect via USB. It's network only. Uh, I'm not connected to a live processor, but I am running a virtual device, uh, which I can start by going up to Tools, Virtual Device, Start. And this is going to emulate a couple different machines. I believe the first one actually is the, uh, the, CX, the CX80 Pro. I was correct. <laughs> All right, great. So. I'm going to connect to a virtualized MX40, and you're going to notice that the layout is completely different from any Novastar software that you may have used before, whether that be Nova LCT, Smart LCT, VCAN, uh, or anything else. We're broken down into a couple different tabs here at the top, Source, Layout, Correction, Processing, Screen Settings, Monitor, and Preset. On Source, it is just that. Here's where we're defining the live input source coming into the system. The MX40 has three HDMI 2.0s, one DisplayPort 1.2, and a 12 GSDI, as well as a really, really cool internal test pattern generator. Right now we're on the test pattern, but if I were to go to any of the other inputs, you're going to see that they become live right away. The internal source is cool. I can go to a full field of red, green, blue, white, uh, or this really nifty pencil. But I can also upload my own uh, JPEGs and PNGs and bitmaps. So if you have your own test pattern that you'd like to utilize, you are able to do so. Scrolling down on the right hand side, we see all of the input uh, information. So we see that the resolution of this source is 30 to 40, 21, 60. And here we can say the gamut if we want to change to a profile of Rec 601, 709, P3, Rec 2020, or we can pull it from the input. We also have a ridiculous amount of input color corrections. Now, don't worry, we're going to have a lot more color corrections uh, later. So this is an SDI source, so there's not really going to be much input um, parameters such as like EDID for that matter. But if we go to Display Porter HDMI, we see here that we can set the EDID uh, on the input. Uh, any of the drop downs, we can also, of course, make our own custom EDID. And in addition, we can change the incoming refresh rate for the EDID. We can work from 2398 all the way up to 240 hertz. And then once again, we can do the info frame override, so your color space of RGB or component level 444, 422. Uh, and then, same what we're doing um, full range or limited range. And then, once again, all the color inputs. So really all you do on this page is you set what your input is going to be, you make sure that all the parameters are proper, everyone's good to go, and then you can move on to the next tab. The next tab is the layout tab. Here is where the system will automatically see any panels that are live coming into the processor. Right now mine is shown that I have 16 panels coming in on ports 1 through 16. The way we map it's very fun, very easy. I select the cabinet, and now I can draw the cabinets as they're arranged in reality. What's really cool is we see that this showing me the percentage of the port as well as of the processor coming in here. One thing you're going to notice that's different is that it does not penalize me for going in a non-square format. In Nova LCT and Smart LCT, it would create a bounding box from the first cabinet to the last cabinet, and it's going to then utilize that for my processing. But whether I'm on pixel 00 all the way down to 30 or 40, 20, 160, I am still utilizing only 9% of this, of the capacity. I can select all the cabinets as well, and I can change the XY coordinates. I can move them by my mouse, or I can type them in. So if I want to be at exactly 120, 120 for my pixel map, I can do so. And I can also rotate these in 90 degree increments. Very fun. Uh, we have cabinet settings. If I want to do a quick, uh, here, let me move my screen. If I want to do a quick blackout, freeze, turn on or off the indicator, light up slowly, or send a test pattern, I can do that from here. And of course, we have all the uh, quick connection guides. 
The next tab is the correction tab. This is real-time seam correction. If I were to select a seam, it would highlight on the panel which seam I'm adjusting on, and now I can change the brightness of just that seam. So if you have dark lines or bright lines, this is the best way to deal with those. And of course, we can change that to seam correction to module correction, where we can actually break into the individual modules and do the uh, correction on those. And then I will not save that. Next tab is going to be processing. Now, this is really cool. So in processing, we default to giving you 14 channels of color correction. Now, this does depend on your receiving card. If you have an A10 receiving card, I believe you do get more uh, levels of correction. Actually, disregard, I'm on A10S. So we give you 14 channels of color correction. We also have color replacement, where I can pick any one color and replace it with another one. This gives me this nice picker here. I could set this purple. I said, I want you to become green, and then I turn it on. Now, it's not going to replace here in the preview, but on the actual LED output, it would replace those colors. It's really, really cool. Great. And then, of course, we can input a, a gamma curve. We can change the curvature from linear to Bezier, and we can add a 3D lookup table or a LUT. The next tab then is the screen settings tab. Here's where we can change elements such as brightness, and gamma, color temperature, and enable or disable our module and cabinet calibration. We can also change the video bit depth of the output from 8-bit to 10-bit to 12-bit. We can enable low latency mode, and if we wanted to, we can actually add additional latency as well, or we can turn this on to you know, two frames or one frame. The sync we can change to be active source. We're just going to read it from the input. Uh, Genlock, or we can even generate an internal sync, which is really, really cool. The internal sync is great if you need to do um, frame doubling. For example, let's say your input's 2398 and your LED wall is flashing. You can then run it at 47.95 and lock to that. Uh, we also allow a, a phase offsets at angle, fraction, and of course, absolute. Frame multiplication is nifty. That allows you to have two sources on screen at the same exact time on different frames. And then utilizing the XY offsets, you can roll your camera and have the camera grab different frames. So essentially with two cameras, you can look at one LED display and see two different things on each of the cameras. Nifty, nifty. Uh, if you know what the um, shutter angle is of your camera, say it's a 180 degree or 120 degree shutter angle, uh, you can tap that in here and you're good to go. We also support three dimension or 3D uh, for left and right, side by side, and then we can sh say the uh, port load here. Monitoring then shows us uh, actual connections between each of the cabinets, shows me how, uh, the running time, the voltage, I can see temperature, and then what's really nifty is I can save these into presets. By default, I have 50 presets, and the preset can be everything from source to layout to process into screen settings. So that's really, really cool. We can also go further into the MX40, where we can turn it into a scalar with a layering. So if I were to go into working mode and change it to be all in one mode, I now have the ability to do layers. And on each of the layers, I can do different scaling. I can also change my entire canvas size. Let's do 2200 by 1440. And as the canvas increases, you notice, you know, let's go, let's go crazy. Let's go 2400. Wow. So this is what my max canvas is here, with 12,500 uh, 12, by 1440, but I'll put this right back to 30 or 40, 60. So you can set your canvas to be custom, and then of course as you add a layer, you can change the position and size of that. You can add a border, let's do 10 pixels, let's make it white. So you can have a border as well, and we can also do cropping. Uh, so this is really cool, and I think this gives you four layers, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes, four layers. So that's really, really cool. So then regardless of the mode, uh, if you go up to Tools and go to Maintain, 
we have the processor itself. So here's where you can restart the processor, upgrade the firmware, uh, even do a controller finder, which will flash it. And then uh, you can go to cabinet, and this will show you all the tiles, the type of tile it is, the receiving card, the firmware, um, and the location. So from here, you can then upload a config file, RCFG, upgrade the firmware, restart. You can also select all the cabinets, upload a file, and upload config files from here. You can also save the RV card configurations. So that's just a little bit of what you can do with the uh, Novastar MX40 and VMP software. I hope you enjoy it. It's really, really fun. Thanks.